Uh-oh, my mouse is not moving. What's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of AI Buzz. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Normally, you might know me as the nerd who talks about machine learning stuff, but today we are diving into pyrotechnics, or trying to. So I did a responsible machine learning test on the M1 MacBook with TensorFlow. That was fun and all, but we really want to see what the absolute limit of this hardware is. Since the MacBook Air has no fans, what's going to happen if I push this thing to its max for hours on end? Am I going to end up frying anything in the computer? Let's try it and find out. All right, so I'm going to end up using that same code that I did the TensorFlow test on. It's that code taken from GitHub from William Zhang, who used it to benchmark M1 computers using a convolutional neural network. Again, a big thanks to William for sharing that code. I'll put a link to it in the description. I'm gonna use that same code, but I'm gonna crank the batch size up quite a bit. So that's gonna use a larger percentage of the GPU. I'm gonna set the batch size to 1024. I also increased the number of nodes that are present within the first two layers of the network. This configuration resulted in the highest utilization of the GPU that I could find. I'm also going to set the number of epochs really, really high so that we can train this thing for a long time and it's not going to stop until we tell it to stop. And we're off. So here's what we're going to keep an eye on. We're going to look at the utilization windows for both the CPU and the GPU. I also have a temperature monitor that's going to look at many of the different sensors that are present within the M1 MacBook. We are mainly going to be keeping a close eye on those ones. Unfortunately, the application truncates the sensor names, so I had to add them as an overlay to the screen that you're seeing. There's actually not much information out about what these sensor names actually mean or correspond to. These names do come directly from Apple, so we're going to have to wait for an update from them to tell us exactly what these sensors mean. If I'm able to pin down exactly what these sensors correspond to, I'm going to pin it as a comment in this video. All right, so we see it cranking up quite nicely here. We see a lot of yellow warning indicators so far. There we have it. We have the first red warning indicator on one of the PACC temperature sensors. Let's keep it going. I should mention that from what I could find on the web, the PACC sensors monitor the performance cores, while the EACC monitor the efficiency cores. It makes a lot of sense based on what we're trying to do here that we see the most load on the performance cores. So that closes on one hour with those particular settings in the neural network. We definitely saw a few red warning indicators. However, I was definitely expecting hotter temperatures than that based on the 90% utilization of this GPU that took place for about one hour. All things considered, and the fact that it has no fans whatsoever, this thing stayed pretty cool. Okay, so that was a pretty boring test. We, we want to test the absolute limit of this thing. How can we make it even hotter? I want to see if I can use machine learning to smell metal from this. Well, if we actually decrease the batch size, my theory is that the chip as a whole is actually going to get a lot more heated more uniformly since it's going to be switching between the GPU and the CPU more frequently. The way I was thinking about it was the test that we just did is a lot like a dump truck unloading a large batch of samples for the GPU to work on. More of what we want is we want a stream of steady workers with wheelbarrows bringing samples back and forth from the CPU to the GPU. This is going to cause a nice distributed burn. So to test out my theory, I decreased the batch size pretty significantly down to 256 samples. And I also decreased the number of nodes in the first two layers of the network. And we're off. Let's take a look at our thermals. All right, only about 20 minutes into this test, and we've definitely already gotten more red warning indicators. I think my theory has brought us in the right direction. 
Now let's see what happens when we leave it at these conditions for hours on end. Some of the ACC sensors are about 50% in the red. This is a little scary. <laughs> These ACC, the performance ACC sensors are above 90 degrees in a lot of the cases. Okay, coming up on two hours and everything's still working fine. It seems to be running perhaps a little warm, but nothing much else has changed. My computer still works. Let's blast through a couple more hours. Okay, that wraps up four hours of training a convolutional neural network under extremely high utilization conditions. Overall, this computer handled a very intense workload for those four hours, and it's really probably not advised to be doing this because remember the MacBook Air has no fans, and you really shouldn't be testing the hardware to this extreme. But I really wanted to test it out for science. Overall, very impressed that this thing handled it so well without a fan. One final test that I wanted to try was cranking up the batch size really high. So I want to put it above 4,000 samples to see how the M1 handles it. Let's try it out. Cranking it up to 4,000 samples. Uh-oh, my mouse is not moving. <laughs> 